Hello and welcome to another edition of New Blue FX Tips and Techniques. I'm Ian Stark for New Blue. In previous tutorials, we've taken a general look at New Blue's Titler Pro, as well as an in depth walkthrough on creating and managing styles. In this tutorial, we're going to get a little more specific and look at using effects and transitions in your Titler projects. In fact, we're going to be even more specific than that because we're going to focus on using not the inbuilt effects and transitions within Titler Pro, but the add on packages, starting with motion blends and motion effects. If you're already a New Blue fan like me, you'll very likely possess one or more of New Blue's effects or transitions bundles. Well, you'll hopefully be delighted to learn that these are all being upgraded to work as effects and transitions directly within the Titler Pro interface. Why is this a good thing? Well, the great thing about applying the effects within Titler Pro is that you can apply them to the paragraph or paragraphs of your choosing and they can be synced to those paragraphs. That means different pieces of text can have different effects behaviours all within a single Titler project. Another bonus feature is that you can also apply effects to individual 2D layers in a paragraph which lets you create great accents for your styles. Everything I've mentioned so far applies to all the effects in Titler Pro, not just the add-on packs. The only difference between the built-in effects and the add-ons is that the add-ons can be used outside Titler Pro like any other plugin. So, the first new blue packs to get upgraded to add-on status are motion effects and motion blends. In this tutorial, I'm not going to be spending any time creating fancy styles because I want to focus just on how to use the effects. Let's start with motion effects. Motion effects is a suite of 10 filters that all let you add movement and dynamism within your titles and footage. Now, I'm not going to go through every single setting in every single effect, but let's build up a title of project and apply one or two of these effects to our paragraph and see what happens. We're going to animate some text to make it look as though it's a flag fluttering in the breeze. In order to minimise the risk of offending any particular nation, I've chosen the national flag of Nauru, the smallest republic on the planet, where there are, to the best of my knowledge, no users of New Blue software to offend among the population of 9,265, and that's despite a targeted marketing campaign earlier in the year. OK, let's kick off by creating our paragraph. I'm happy with the default font, but I'm going to size the paragraph up and I'm going to apply a texture which is, of course, the national flag of Nauru. And I'll stretch it across the paragraph. And finally, I'm going to add a 3D outline using the eyedropper to match the yellow of the flag. Now you might just be able to notice the outline vector of the original text, and I'm going to get rid of that by bringing the 3D outline layer forward so it has the same depth as the original 3D face, i.e. zero. OK, so there's my flag text, colourful if rather uninspiring. Let's give it some motion by going to the library, twirling down effects, motion effects and clicking on rolling waves. Now I can preview any of the presets just by hovering the mouse over the thumbnails. And when I've made my choice, I just double click and the effect is applied. Notice on the timeline that another lane has been created for the rolling waves effect. We'll look at that in our second example. Now, the motion isn't particularly flag-like, so I'm going to have to tweak a few settings. Firstly, I want to reduce the amplitude, and amplitude determines the displacement caused by the wave. You can immediately see that by reducing it to around 25, we have a much more realistic flag-like motion. But it's still not perfect. I want to ramp up the speed of the wave to make it look a little more billowy as though it's fluttering in a gentle breeze. And finally I'm going to adjust the shading to add a little more definition. Almost there. I think I need to increase the width of the wave slightly by upping the frequency and if I want to I can play around with the direction the wave travels. Now I think for just a few seconds work that looks pretty good. If I go back out to my NLE now, I can really finish the project off by dropping in an aerial photo of Nauru and a full screen image of the flag, which has had the same rolling wave settings applied to it and then composited with the island using screen mode and an opacity of around 50%. Okay, so as a flag simulation, well, it probably doesn't bear close scrutiny, but as an attractive way to add movement into your text, this is, well, I think, rather inviting. OK, example number two. And this time we're going to try our hand at keyframing some motion. 
So I'll create a new project, add some text, a background, and I'm going to apply the motion blur effect using the horizontal blur preset. I think it's a lovely looking effect when it's applied to simple plain text, but it looks even better when you animate it. So let's do that now. Blur controls the length of the blur. Angle changes the angle of the blur. Well, duh. Direction basically sets the offset of the blur from the centre of the original image, which of course will also be affected by angle, so you'll want to use those controls together. Blend controls the mix with the original image and Edges lets you either use the original image or turn it off so as to use only the blurred output. Let's keep the default settings for this preset but let's turn on keyframing so we can animate the settings over time. I'm also going to check the Smooth Interpolation box which changes the keyframe curves from linear to smooth which I think looks more attractive. My first keyframe has been added for me and I'm happy with the default settings so now I'll move the timeline head to around the halfway mark and just by changing any of the settings, a new keyframe is automatically added. I'm going to change angle to 90 degrees and direction to minus 100. Now I'll drag the timeline head to the end of the track and I'll just change the direction to plus 100. And there you have it. Fairly simple example, but hopefully you'll now have all the basics to go off and explore on your own. But before we finish this project, let's just do one last thing, and that's to add a motion blend transition in and out. Ever so simple to do. Library, Transitions, Motion Blends. Select the transition type, preview by hovering over the thumbnail, and apply by double-clicking. Have another look at the timeline, and you can see where the transition's been placed. You can lengthen it, shorten it, or move it to the other end of your track so it becomes a transition out. And remember you can have multiple transitions just like effects. So let's add one of the inbuilt transitions. I'm going to use fade in, move it to the end, and our paragraph dissolves away quite nicely. We may as well start in a similar way by adding a fade in. Uh, this time we'll use the fade letter preset. And though I say so myself, I think that's rather splendid. Animating effects and transitions really opens up the possibilities that Title Pro has to offer, and there's pretty much no end to what you can create, at least as far as titles go. These examples took me literally a few minutes to come up with, and for me, that's the real beauty of Title Pro. It's so easy to come up with new ideas just by playing around and exploring. And I can tell you I am really excited at the prospect of having all the other new blue effects and transition packs available to me from within Titler Pro. This is one powerful titling tool. As always, I urge you to just explore for yourself all the possibilities Titler Pro has to offer. We have more tutorials planned, so keep tuning in. Meanwhile, this is Ian Stark saying have fun and thanks for watching.